but then it didn't take the exit for some reason. That's a fail. Welcome back to eHermes, your electric adventure travel channel. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell button to be notified of our upcoming content. Hello and welcome to today's adventure. Today's trip is to Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, and the adventure is not so much in the destination as in the new full self-driving subscription service that we subscribe to on Friday. This will be our first real trip with it, and people ask whether it's worth uh, $200 a month or $10,000 to purchase it. And I'm not going to tell anyone how to spend their money, but I will say that the trip we're going to take today is a long road trip on the Ohio and Pennsylvania Turnpikes. And it's probably the easiest case for full self-driving that there could be. And if it can't handle these two toll roads with very limited access uh, flawlessly, then it probably isn't worth much of anything. After we get off the turnpike, we will get off at Breezewood, Pennsylvania to Interstate 70. Breezewood, Pennsylvania is an interesting interchange because I believe it's the only interchange in the country where you go from one interstate to the other interstate, but yet there are traffic lights, driveways, truck stops, hotels, and about everything else you can think of. Two left turns to actually uh, make the, not left ramps, but left turns to make the interchange. So we'll do that. That'll get us over towards Baltimore. Then we'll go across the Bay Bridge, which is interesting in its own right. Probably the most frightening bridge I've ever driven across in my life. And then we'll be on some limited access highways and we'll see how it does there. All right, we're coming up onto a traffic signal that it will, it's actually red right now, way in the distance, but it'll almost certainly be green while we, when we get there. But we are turning right. So I'll have to take it out of navigate on autopilot to make the turn because this version does not make turns by itself. It would stop for the light. It would stop for the light whether it was red or green if I wasn't, uh, if I was going straight. Unless you tap the stock or tap the gas pedal to tell it that you recognize there's a light there and if it's green it'll keep going. Then if it changes to red after you do that, it will stop. All right, so I'm gonna take it out of full self-driving, turn on the turn signal, and uh, we'll slow down here, we'll make the turn. Whoa, where's some buggy? Look at that. I wonder what it wonder, wonder what it'll recognize for that. Pedestrian. Well, it flashed a pedestrian for a second, but that was it. So now we're on a single lane road. It will, this is basically just autopilot, except it'll recognize stop signs and traffic lights. One of the issues about full self-driving, uh, the extra cost for it, is the fact that, in my opinion, regular autopilot that comes with the vehicle is pretty darn good to start with. So is it worth the difference for automatic lane changes and recognizing traffic lights? I'm not sure yet. As far as the smart summon, I think it's a neat trick. I don't really think it's particularly useful. I doubt that I ever really use it except kind of to show people. But the auto lane change, the automatic traffic light, if they ever get surface streets and turns and all that down pat, well, that's a whole different issue then. But we're a long ways from that. I know there are some people out with a expanded beta version. I think it's 9.2. Version 10 is about to come out. Uh, that looks like it does some pretty cool stuff, but it certainly doesn't do it flawlessly yet. And until it can do it flawlessly, again, uh, it may be more harm than good, in fact. The next intersection is a four-way stop, so the car will stop by itself, and I will have to tell it then to go when it's time to go. I went through a flashing yellow light uh, last night, and it really confuses the heck out of it. It keeps thinking it's a traffic signal about to turn to red, and it slows you down and tries to stop, and really they need to work on that because that didn't work well at all. If you look at the route at the map, you'll see that our first stop today is supposed to be Somerset, Pennsylvania. At 10.03, it's now 7.51. We will almost certainly be stopping for a restroom break before that because we both had coffee and uh, I don't think we're going to last for over two hours still. So uh, the other thing that I'm struggling with right now, or it's struggling with, is it thinks the speed limit here is 35, which I'm relatively sure is not the case. So because it's a two-lane road, it'll only let it go five miles over the speed limit. So we're only going 40 miles an hour when we should be going 55 or 60. 
it could possibly be 45, but I don't, I don't even know that it's that. And even if it were, uh, at least we'd be going 50. So here we come up on the traffic light. Mrs. Z. Hermes panicked for a second. I have not done anything except keep my hand on the wheel. It's pulled up to the stop bar. It's our turn, so I can either step on the gas, I'm just gonna push on the stock, and that will get us going again through the intersection. As Mrs. E. Hermes just reminded me, the accelerator pedal, not the gas pedal. Old habits do die hard. We're approaching another traffic signal. I will be turning left here, so regardless of whether it's red or green, I'll have to take it out of uh, navigate on autopilot so that I can make the turn because again on surface streets it does not make turns. Right after the traffic light should be the ramp to get onto the Ohio Turnpike. It should take that all by itself. We will have to see if it does that. And then we come to a toll booth which I can't imagine what it's going to do there but I will be very vigilant to make sure I'm ready to take over as I always am because notwithstanding the name we all know it is not really full self-driving. All right, it's gonna stop the light for me. I haven't done anything yet. Well, stopped a little soon, spilled my coffee. Great. We're gonna turn left. So it was a rather abrupt stop at the traffic signal, and actually it was before the traffic signal, which doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm glad I got this closed back up. So uh, the speed limit here is 50. I do believe that's correct. We're coming up on the ramp. Maybe I'll drink some of my coffee. And let's see what it does. Like I say, the ramp I think will be pretty straightforward for it. The toll plaza and toll booths where you have to go in this little narrow lane. I have my doubts about that, but we'll see. All right, it knocked that itself out of uh, autopilot where the road went from one lane to two lanes, it wanted to get in the left lane, and I knew I had to get in the right lane. I actually probably should have left it. It would have changed the lane for me. Let's see if it does this. The answer is no. It's not going to do this. So that's that's not great. I don't know why. Once you're on, well, because it's not on real navigate on autopilot until you're on a four-lane highway. So it'll make this next ramp, I think, but getting on, I can see why that didn't work, even though I kind of expected it would. Let's see what happens to the toll plaza. Got an easy pass out. Hold it up there. Hope I'm not blocking everybody's view, but gotta do this till we get through the toll plaza. Fortunately or unfortunately, there was a car ahead of us and it actually took that pretty well. Speed limit is 10 miles an hour here. It's only been at five, I'm not sure why. Okay, so we're through the toll plaza. Uh, we will need this again, so where can we put this? I'm not sure why we're just going five miles an hour. Oh, here we go. Okay, now we're on. Now it should take this ramp by itself. Should. It did do that by itself. It had to struggle a little bit there coming out of the toll plaza to figure out what to do, but I did not intervene even though I was about to. Merged by itself. Uh, there's construction here, so the speed limit is 60. We will set it for 69. Up here in about, I don't know, 10 miles, there's a major interchange where Interstate 76 and Interstate 80 cross each other. And the Ohio Turnpike, for most of its length, is Interstate 80. But at this interchange, it becomes Interstate 76. Interstate 80 goes up north, a little further north towards New York City. Interstate 76 becomes the uh, 
the rest of the Ohio Turnpike and the Pennsylvania Turnpike towards Philadelphia. To continue on the Turnpike, which is to actually change from Interstate 80 to Interstate 76, you have to be in the left lanes because the Interstate 80 uh, ramp to stand Interstate 80 is a right ramp. So we'll see how it does with that when we get up there. I don't really expect it to do anything through here. We're going relatively slow and there's not much traffic, so it won't have any reason to change lanes. One other thing though, besides it changing lanes by itself, when it comes up behind a slower car, if you do turn the turn signal, it will check the blind spot and move you over there. So you can force it even if it doesn't think it needs to change lanes. Now we'll go back so we're not being that guy in the left lane driving that isn't passing anybody. So that's the other way to do it. For instance, when we come up to the service plaza up here, because I think Mrs. C. Hermie and I will stop and use the restroom, uh, because the next stop is, according to the trip planner, is the supercharger in Super Somerset, PA, we will have to force it to make that exit ramp. So all I'll have to do is turn the turn signal on and that'll take the exit ramp. Before we get to the interchange of 76 and Interstate 80, we come to the exit for Lordstown. And for those of you who follow electric vehicles, you may know there's a new electric vehicle truck maker called Lordstown Motors. They purchased an old General Motors plant here in Lordstown, Ohio, and are trying to sell an electric pickup truck. They seem to have had some issues. Uh, I think the CEO resigned a few months ago. Not sure if, uh, if they're gonna make, make it across the finish line. As Tesla found out, even R Rivion, with all their backing from Amazon and Ford, among others, is finding out it is really expensive and difficult to start making a brand new vehicle and a brand new type of vehicle. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's some of the plant off on the left. It says, Ride with Lordstown. And Lordstown Motors uh, symbol on the factory. Pretty sure this is both a stamping plant and an assembly plant all in one facility. So they have pretty much everything they need here. Lordstown, uh, General Motors used the Lordstown plant most recently until it closed to make the Chevy Cruze, which I think they've discontinued. So that's Lordstown Motors, Lordstown assembly and stamping plant. And here we come up on the interchange between Interstate 76 and Interstate 80. I'm in the right lane, going five miles over the speed limit. Uh, this is an exit only to an exit that I do not want to take. I want to be over in the center lane or the left lane to, to, to transition to Interstate 76, staying in the Ohio Turnpike to the Pennsylvania Turnpike. So I'm not going to do anything if we actually do get off in this exit. I know another way around to get there. Uh, that's a little bit out of our way, but I, I want to give the car every opportunity to do the right thing here because, again, while this needs to be done, it's a pretty simple maneuver, and if you can't do the most simple things like this, then uh, you have to question how effective it is. So let's see what happens. On the screen, it doesn't even recognize this as an interchange, so that's a little bit disconcerting. It doesn't say uh, keep left or anything like that, so... We'll have to see how it does here, or if we end up going towards Youngstown and New York City. Oh, oh, it's looking positive. It says it's gonna make an upcoming lane change. This is good. All by itself, checking the blind spot. Here we go. So that's good, worked well. Now the center lane can go either direction, so we have to make sure it picks sticking to the left and not trying to follow the, uh, the lane to the right, because like I say, you can do either from this lane. Because we're more or less going straight, I think we'll follow that, but we will see. Yes, okay. The next point of interest will be the toll plaza at the end of the Ohio Turnpike. Well, if we get off at the rest area. Are we getting off the rest area? She shrugged her shoulders. I know you can't see her shoulders, but um, the next 
point of interest will be the service plaza or the east gate toll plaza which again is a big plaza all the way across the highway we'll see how it does there if we want to stop at the service plaza i will force it into that so we'll come back to you then so in the last 15 minutes or so i passed one group of vehicles which the car did all by itself it passed the vehicles, it got past the semi that was at the head of it, and then it uh, changed lanes to get back into the non-passing lane. We are gonna stop at the service plaza. Uh, it says the last one in Ohio, it does not say how far the next one is, unfortunately. The sun's right in our eyes. It's probably right in the camera's eyes, too. Camera's eye, because there's only one eye in the camera, right? Anyhow, um, so I will force it off the interstate here with the turn signal, and then, uh, disengage it so I can park it. Then we'll re-engage it when we get back on to the highway. But wait, before that there's construction. Oh, great. Let's see how it handles this. Looks like lanes shift. I didn't see any speed. We didn't get to the service plaza. Yeah. Mrs. E. Hermes got scared, so did I, although I think it would have got it eventually. It seemed to be barrel, barreling towards the barrels uh, too fast, so I grabbed the steering wheel and took control because I'm always paying attention, ready to take control at all times in case it does the worst thing at the worst possible time, according to Mr. Musk. Because it's in a construction zone, I really have my doubts it's e even with the turn signal it's going to get this right. But let's see what it does. Actually it did. still thinks it's on the highway. It's uh, still got the solid line. So I'm going to disengage it now that we're into the service plaza. Okay, we're on to the ramp. Oh, we're still in the construction. Eh. We'll give it a try. Alright, we're on the ramp, even though we're still in construction. Let's dial the speed way back because the things are at the highway speed. There should be a ramp speed, we'll say 50. I have no idea what's going on up here with the construction. What are you yelling about? So it made that merge into this lane, which I guess is still just the ramp because of the construction. I don't know, I'm a little confused. Prepare to stop. Pay toll one mile. Oh, this should be fun. As I said, this is where the toll plaza goes the entire width of the highway. The two or three lanes in each direction become, I don't know, ten in each direction, something like that. And there's any number of toll plazas. You never know which ones are open. I don't know that the cars can have any way to recognize the open gates versus the not open gates for it to use. And if it's still under construction like this, it's really going to be a interesting situation. I almost said something you can't say on YouTube. Okay. 
So pretty much did everything right, but with the gate there. Oh Lord, let's see what happens here. Well, it actually did that pretty well. It was nervous, but it did it pretty well. Mrs. E. Hermes can't even look anymore. Uh, with the gate down, I was going too fast. I think the speed limit through there is either five or 10 miles an hour, and I was going, I don't know, 20. So it, uh, it did read the transponder to open the gate, but I might have hit it if I hadn't, hadn't hit the brakes to slow it down a little bit. So I did that We're right back in now. And uh, more construction, wonderful. Are you hiding your eyes because the sun's in them or because you just can't bear to watch anymore? So with that last set of barricades, I finally let the car do its thing and it did avoid everything and keep us where we needed to be. It was nervous time, but it did the right thing. If I had not wrested control away from it on the other ones, might it have done the right thing? Probably. Do I know that for sure? No. Welcome into Pennsylvania. So they're easy pass system, like I say, especially if you stay in the left lane, it will avoid the toll part you do. Oh, well, maybe it's all that way now. With coronavirus, I'm going to force it into the right lane because I'm not driving that fast. Oh, but that's an interesting thing. When you want to force it into the right lane, you have to turn the turn signal stock all the way, not just the change lane halfway thing but all the way. So it tried to get over there, but there was a car there, so it didn't. We're just gonna stay here for now, actually. We're gonna speed up, though, because we're out of the construction zone. Do we know what the speed limit is? Oh, it says it's 50 still. So we'll go 60. I have to say the lane markings here leave a little bit to be desired. Are they even there? Are they blacked out, or are they... Can you see them when they're on your side? Huh? They look black. Okay, we're gonna stay in our lane as it says. We're gonna go through the high speed thing here and was there even an option to go that way anymore, huh? To the right? I don't think so. I think those are closed now. They must do by mail your license plate if you don't have a transponder. As I mentioned, here is the interchange to Pittsburgh and the airport, and it is an exit only. The screen is not recognizing that we have to do anything here. It didn't have the Interstate 76 and Interstate 80 interchange either, and it got over, so we'll see if it does it here. I really don't want to get off on this one. It wouldn't be the end of the world, I guess, on a Sunday, but... Let's see what happens. I'm getting into the rolling countryside and the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. One thing I said earlier is that this, these interstates, these toll roads in particular, with the very limited access, are the one of the easiest cases for full self-driving. That being said, I have always found the Pennsylvania Turnpike somewhat tiring to drive on. It is very hilly, very curvy, and except on the Sunday morning, there's usually a lot of traffic on it. It is gonna make the lane change. It said that it's on the exit only one mile sign. Well, it's going to. So it tells me, now it tells me that it's gonna do it. That little ding is to let me know. I can always cancel it by tapping the turn signal if I don't want it to do it. So I did get over and uh, do its thing. All right, so Mrs. E. Hermes and I are having a debate. It seems that it stay, it gets over into the right lane when there's two lanes after you're done passing somebody, particularly if someone comes up behind you. It seems to be pretty good about getting into the right lane. However, when there's three lanes like this, it seems perfectly content to stay in the middle lane and not get all the way into the right lane. The question is, is that proper etiquette or not? Because you are supposed to keep right except to pass. This is not exactly right, but it's not the passing lane either, so I'm not sure. Let us know in the comments below what you think. Okay, we're gonna stay. It's probably gonna wanna force me into the middle lane because it doesn't know that we wanna stop at the service plaza. That's not programmed in. So let's see if it does that, and then we'll cancel it real quick when it does. Yep, it says it's going to. Okay, we'll tap to cancel. And now we can get off here. Because we're in an exit only into a parking lot, I'm going to disengage the autopilot shortly. Where exactly is it? There's walls up here, it can't be right here. 
wants to, trying to trying to do the right thing, forced me over there, but I'm not going to let it. No. 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 Not only am I in the wrong lane, I'm also going very slowly. There's cars in front of me going very slowly, so it's trying to pass them and get out of the exit only lane. But it does allow me to cancel it. I'm just going to disengage it now. So I'm going to manually drive coming out of the service plaza again because it's just, there's no lane markings. It's just kind of a free for all. Uh, the service plaza had electric vehicle chargers, which I always like to see and I always like to try to use. But they were the blink chargers. I think you have to pay for them, which I don't really mind the money, but for the five minutes we were there and a little bit of power we were gonna get, I just didn't see how it was worthwhile. So I let the uh, car merge onto the highway in the autopilot. I need to turn my blinker off. I actually forced the merge because, again, we were, where we were starting there, there was no real line, lane markings. It was kind of wide open. It did check the blind spot, though, and got out in front of this truck. It was fairly aggressive, actually, uh, which I like because it was a very short merge area there. So that was interesting. I wanted to change lanes to get around the slower vehicles up here, but initially there was a vehicle in the blind spot. It recognized that. That was with the red you saw on the screen. Uh, when he saw the signal on, he must have slowed down just a little bit, created enough space, then the car went ahead and moved over into the passing lane so that we can pass these vehicles up here. It seems to me, I don't know this for a fact, but it seems to me that it kind of hangs out in the passing lane unless there's somebody behind you, and then it tries to skedaddle right back over into the into the slower lane, at least the middle lane, if there's three lanes, and the right lane, if there's only two lanes. Which is good, because nobody wants to be that guy that's hanging out there in the passing lane, not passing anybody. Well, some people apparently do want to be that guy. I just am not one of them. So you wanted to get right over there, even before it cleared the vehicle behind us, and now it did jump over there as soon as it created enough space because there's somebody behind me. There was somebody behind me in the passing lane. We have an interesting situation here where we are coming up on a substantially slower vehicle, but yet there are other vehicles beside me in the passing lane. It's gonna to try to get over, but it can't. It recognizes the vehicles that are there. It looked for an opening. It's not gonna see one for a while based on what I see in the mirror. It'll keep trying, it'll keep trying. Eventually all the cars will clear, although the car behind me then is gonna jump over there, I have a feeling. But I'm not doing anything, except kind of, oh, we have a shot here. Oh, and he, we're going to take it before that other guy catches up to us. It took it pretty aggressively again. I like it. We are coming up on our exit uh, to supercharge, our first supercharge of the trip. So this will be here for 20 minutes. And we will see if it takes the exit ramp by itself. I'm pretty confident that it will. Mrs. E. Hermes, can you tell our viewers what the rules are when you're driving through a tunnel? No. Nope. You cannot. Well, the rules are, Mrs. E. Hermes has forgotten. Windows must all be rolled down and you must beep the horn. Okay, it's slowed down. It's turned on the signal. But then it didn't take the exit for some reason. That's a fail. Well, that's disappointing. We had to... Uh, it tried to take the exit. It thought about it. I think it was the construction. It was a very short ramp, but still, that's disappointing. Okay, we merged back onto the interstate by itself after we got through the toll plaza with me driving. Shortly, we'll be going through the tunnel. So that mountain up there is just too hard to get up and over. So this is where we go through it in the tunnel. As I recall, on the other side of this tunnel, when you come out, there's a big left turn, sharp curve of the road. The speed limit is, uh, is what? It says 45. 55. So we'll slow down to 65 at least. That seems right. What did I just say? Yep, 
thing is, it is a tunnel. We are coming up on the interchange from, well, we're actually on Interstate 70 and 76. Interstate 70 joined us from the west a few miles back, well, quite a few miles back. Um, so now we are going to get off to stay on Interstate East. So we'll be getting off the turnpike to stay on Interstate 70 East, to go towards Baltimore and Washington. This is the one where you go through the town of Breezewood on the ramp that has traffic lights, driveways, gas stations. It's pretty bizarre. Never really seen anything like it. it slowed down nicely for the sharp curve by itself. Didn't really expect to do that. So far, so good. Looks like a pretty normal interchange. But in one mile, the fun begins. We should actually slow down nicely for this very sharp curve. I was impressed with that. I thought we'd go flying into it. I mentioned very sharp. So we make this last left turn through the traffic light, and then it's just like we're back on a nice interstate highway again, all just like that. Really bizarre. As we approach the split, where you split between going to either Baltimore or Washington, we're going toward Baltimore. Traffic has really picked up. I did have to, well, I'm not sure I had to, but I did intervene in one spot back there when the camera wasn't on, there was a camper merging there really wasn't enough space for me to get into the left lane to let them merge so i just kind of forced my way over in a way that was maybe not entirely safe but it was probably the best situation we had uh, best resolution of the situation i don't think the car would have done that it probably would have either slowed way down in the lane i was in and let him ahead of me or forced him off and not be able to get in neither one of which seemed like a good idea so i did take control but uh it's not that the car didn't do anything, didn't do anything wrong, or wasn't trying to do the right thing. It really was. It was just there was no maybe great right answer in that case. All right, so it got me over where I needed to be, uh, as far left as it could before these other two lanes came on from the left. Actually, I'm okay even right here. I may try to get over one more. Kinds of bad stuff happening up here. Uh, while I was not recording, it started to go into the left lane because the lane was clear, but then someone from the far, far left lane cut over, it recognized them, put me back to the lane I was in, let him go by, and then went over and made the transition. It was actually very well done. Now it's trying to go over one more lane to the left. Someone in the blind spot. He's not going to slow down and let me in, even though the signal's on. I suspect we'll be a little more aggressive here. Yep. That guy was actually probably closer than the first guy, but he said that's enough of that. All right, here we come up to the Bay Bridge, by far the most scariest bridge in the world. We have six and a half miles before you need the easy pass, so you can probably relax. Yeah, I know, but I think they've actually moved to the other side of the bridge now. The toll pass used to be on this side of the bridge. The bridge is not six and a half miles away. I think we'll stop. We'll 
So there used to be a toll plaza on this side of the bridge, only going eastbound. You'd pay your toll. It wasn't a lot of money, two, three dollars. Then for a while there was no toll. And the last time I was through here, I believe they were tearing the toll plaza out. But now it says there is a toll again, although it seems to be at a distance that would put it at the far side of the bridge. So I think they just moved it. And uh, I think they made it only easy pass and plate pass. I don't think you uh, pay cash anymore it says at all. No cash. No cash, yeah. It doesn't say plate pass either, though. So I don't know what you do if you don't have an easy pass. Does it go down one lane? The left lane is definitely closed. Everybody runs up there and squeezes into the middle lane, which makes them all stop and back up. I think the right lane stays the way it is. not paying attention and he probably does not have autopilot or it keeps paying attention for him. It's not on not an expressway anymore. It's gonna not do auto navigate on autopilot, just do regular autopilot. So I mentioned it is the scariest bridge in the world. You might wonder why I think it's so scary, and there's actually several reasons for it. The first of which you'll see up here shortly when we get a little bit closer. You can kind of see it from here. Uh, it's built on these little spindly steel legs that look like something from a kid's erector set. That's one thing, it is extremely narrow. I think the uh, lines are actually painted half on the flat pavement, half on the guard wall. And sometimes, oh my, those people seem unhappy. And sometimes heading eastbound, the, west, the westbound span has three lanes, the eastbound span only has two lanes. Sometimes heading eastbound, like on a Friday afternoon when people are going to the shore, they put one lane head, heading opposing traffic on the westbound span. So you have one lane eastbound opposing two lanes westbound with nothing but a white, dashed white line between them. It now decided we're back on a good highway, so it's going to navigate on autopilot. I'm not quite sure, except the uh, toll. Well, maybe the toll's holding it up here. I'm not sure why. Do not tailgate. Do not tailgate. Congestion ahead when flashing. Okay, so there you get a pretty good view. I'm actually going to turn the camera so you just see the highway more than the screen right now. The screen's not doing anything particularly interesting. What do you see there? Huh? Whoa. What do you see? It's not? It's flashing, but I don't see a picture. But it's on. Okay, now it should be recording again. So there you have a good look at it. In fact, if you look, is it looking out the window good? If you look, you can see the spindly little legs there that hold it up. And then the last thing that makes it so uncomfortable is the fact that it looks like they couldn't decide or ran out of money how to make it because there's at least four different bridge types just on the eastbound span. There's an under the deck truss, which we're on right now with the little spindly metal legs. Then up here, there's an over the deck truss. Then there's a cable suspension bridge. And then finally at the far end, there's the traditional concrete piers and steel beams uh, deck support. So it's like they had a contest about what's the best bridge design and they decided they had four really good ideas and they put them all together or something. It's really kind of bizarre. Even the uh, newer westbound span has a couple of different types, at least three. Yeah, there's a big girder there, there's 
traditional concrete deck there. I know that it also has a cable supported structure. And oftentimes it's windy as well up here, just to add a little more interest. Well, you see up there to the left around the curve, you can see it almost looks like the bridge ends and a new one starts. Yeah, that's, that's a little sketchy. There are some real nice views up here though, I will say that. I'm really surprised there's this much traffic headed eastbound on a Sunday. Now the school's back and everything. Yeah, people might be going for a long, long pre-Labor Day week. Yeah, I can see that. So now we have a little bit of over the deck truss. Then we go right into the cable. Actually, this is the cable suspended. So I guess this is all one thing, although it doesn't always have this. So I believe this is an under deck truss support right here, and then we have coming up an overhead truss support that's not cable suspended, and we have the square style on the eastbound lanes, and on the westbound lanes you can see the rounded style. Just like, like I said, it looks like they had a lot of good ideas and they decided to put them all together instead of just picking one. Overhead truss. either traditional I'm not sure actually if it's a precast deck like over there or if it's beam supported on the concrete piers but it's either one of those are pretty traditional commonly used types it's just the mixing of all the different styles that always gets me so we're gonna go about seven and a half more miles and we are going to supercharge because we are down to 54 miles of range this will be our last supercharge of the trip, although I'll probably do it one more time right before we go to the hotel because it's always better to supercharge with a warm battery than first thing in the morning with a cold battery. Much more efficient, much quicker. So we'll supercharge here and then we'll supercharge in Rehoboth Beach before we go to the hotel. So shout out to the Graysonville, Maryland supercharger for several reasons. First of all, it is at a Royal Farms gas station, and Royal Farms gas stations have the best fried chicken in the whole wide world. I would go there just to get their chicken, even if I didn't need gas or to charge. Second of all, about a quarter of a mile down the road, maybe, down the little residential street. Hi, say hi, Miss C. Hermes. Right past that silver pickup truck is the gas station. There's this beautiful little park right on the Chesapeake Bay. So it's a wonderful place to kill a little bit of time while you're charging. So yes, shout out to the Graysonville, Grassonville, Graysonville, Maryland Supercharger. We're coming up behind this truck. We're going to turn the signal on. It, as Mrs. E. Hermes pointed out, it maintains autopilot. It doesn't knock you out of autopilot. You don't have to re-engage autopilot. All you do is turn the turn signal on, it changes the lane, it turns the turn signal off for you. 
Again, it is a full turn signal, not just the halfway where it snaps back, but the full where it holds it. But even though it's the, the one where it holds it, when it is done with it, it does uh, turn it off. So when we go around this truck, if this, this other traffic stays out of our way and moves a little faster, uh, I will show you that it goes right back. Now, flashing yellow lights are a problem for it. It really gets confused by them. We're coming up to a traffic signal as well. Let's see what it does here. The signal is currently green, although there's a left turn uh, arrow that's red. Whoop, I had to grab the steering wheel. I hadn't, I wasn't holding the steering wheel well, so that's my bad. Didn't even make me uh, notice the signal. It just went right through it for me. I didn't even have to hit the stock. So we're finally gonna get around this truck and uh, I will show you that again, still staying with autopilot. I'll turn the signal on now. It'll try to go over. Wait, it says there's a truck there. You can't go over yet. But then when I get by it, it does go over. Works very nicely. All you do is hit the signal, the full signal, and it takes care of the rest. Another traffic signal that's green. We're just going to go right through it. It's not even going to make me uh, acknowledge it. All right, so we have a left turn up here. We are not navigating on autopilot. We're just on autopilot. So while it will recognize the traffic signal, it will not change lanes for me. So we'll do that ourselves. Well, actually, we'll change lanes for me. It won't make the turn for me. So this was Federal Route 50, I believe, and we're turning on to just State Route 404, which is a four-lane, somewhat limited access highway for part of the way to Rehoboth. Um, but... I don't believe we'll be on navigate on autopilot at all. It'll just be basic autopilot with traffic uh, stop sign and traffic signal recognition. We'll give that a little bit of a try and then that'll pretty well wrap it up. I have to say that on the turnpikes and even on the busier interstates around Washington and Baltimore, I thought the navigate on autopilot did an outstanding job. It even um, corrected something that I may have made a mistake when it tried to merge and there was somebody there and the well, that somebody moved into the lane as we were moving into the lane at the same time, it, it got out of the way, so that was wonderful. Um, so yeah, I think it worked uh, very well under most cir circumstances. So the minimum criteria was, you know, did it do what it needed to do on those easy cases? And I would say the answer was yes. The few times I intervened, it was because I got nervous. I'm not necessarily sure I had to intervene. I just got nervous, so I did intervene. I'm not sure if it's worth $200 a month unless you're driving an awful lot on the open highway, cross country, something like that. Then it probably would be just day to day use. I have my doubts, at least for me. I will say I do believe it's a little bit safer than driving myself because it does see things in the blind spot. Even when I turn to look, you know, you glance over your shoulder. In the meantime, somebody stops in front of you. You, you can't personally look two places at one time, but the car can. So I think it's slightly safer and it does make a long road trip much easier. If we are going to Florida again with this, or when I go to Florida again with this, I will definitely resubscribe that month. And that's the one thing about this. You can subscribe and unsubscribe. Now, you, once you subscribe for the month, you've paid for the whole month and it's gonna be on for the whole month. You can cancel the next day and it'll still work the rest of the month and then at the end of the month, it won't work anymore. But if you wanna say three months from now, subscribe again for another month, you can do that. So that's pretty much the wrap up. We'll go a little bit here on this road and I uh, just wanna ask you to please subscribe. And if you like this video, please like it and uh, hit the bell button. If you are a subscriber, and you'll be notified of our upcoming content. Thank you again. We did make it to the beach.